No, it's not simply people are always going to use a telephone. Because over here, you have an open market in the entrepreneurial model, and everybody's out you know, busting their tail to produce it cheaper and better. Over here, you have some bureaucracy taking seven years to approve. And over here, you've got a bureaucrat paying for it. Over here, you have a customer paying for it. So you want to rethink the entire health system, but your goal should be to make American health and American health care the finest value added on the planet because as people get richer, they pay more for health care. There, there is today uh, a uh, Boeing 747 that fills up in Japan that flies to Minneapolis in order to go shopping at Mall of the Americas. Now, if you go to Mall of the Americas from Tokyo in order to buy Reeboks, can you imagine what you'll do for open heart surgery or liver transplant? Well, we already see that happening today. I would it's argue. beginning to happen, but in the welfare state model, it happens despite us, not because of us. And what you want to do is accelerate it and change the whole model from bureaucratic to violence. So, so what I'm suggesting is you want to think vision, strategies, projects, and tactics as it relates to health. And when you think you've got this aggressive model locked in, you then want to go to doctors, and you want to go to pharmacies, and you want to go to biotech people, and you want to go to other places, and, and you want to go back to listen, learn, help, and lead. You know, and you want to share with people the concept of health within a renewed American civilization, both better health care at lower cost with greater health for Americans, and the idea that health can lead to tremendous creativity and to a very big market all around the world. Think of it this way. Health is a third wave information revolution, which means it should be an explosion of lower costs, higher quality, more choices, and greater access. That should be the model you want. I mean, entrepreneurship, all the things we talk about. You look at the lessons of American history. Personal strength combined with entrepreneurial free enterprise, combined with the spirit of invention and discovery, implemented through Deming's model of quality, should lead you to lower cost, higher quality, more choices, and greater access. And yet, in the welfare state model, you can't even quite believe. I mean, you say, well, that's silly. Nobody can get all those. That is the normal model, isn't it, in the private sector? <coughs> that is what we expect. And so you want to liberate health from bureaucracy, reestablish this dynamic. Now, we have a, we have a pretty neat video uh, that came out of Hewlett Packard that I want to share with you that gives you an example of the kind of uh, dynamic third wave world market health system we're thinking about. Hi, this is Tom Miller. Tom, this is Hal. You wanted to consult on your patient, Emily Nelson. Yeah, Hal. Emily's labs show no infectious etiology, but her liver function continues to deteriorate. Well, this berry picking. Uh, we can see a fairly high suspicion now for mushroom poisoning. Now, look at this. I've asked the nurse to get an ID from Emily on these if she can. Good. I'll also order a screen for amatoxins. Oh, a word of caution, Tom. Now, if this is Amanita, liver failure can be quick, and the mortality rate among kids is over 50%. I'll be over to the hospital soon, Hal. I want to thank you. I'll keep current on our labs. Good. Emily, I've got some pictures of mushrooms that I'd like you to look at. Do you think it could have been this one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about this one? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Hepatotoxic and the Amanita did test positive. I've notified the CDC and the state health department. How bad is she? Not good. The PET scan shows progressive liver damage. In fact, I've got her listed with the National Registry for possible transplant. When would she need it? Soon. However, here's something interesting. Two Amanita cases in Oregon were treated with forced diuresis and pulled through. Of course, Emily's going on 30 hours now, and I'm not sure she'll respond. But then I found this from Jean Leclerc in Geneva. He's the leading expert on toxic mycology, and he's trying a whole new protocol. We should call him. I did. So, having studied your patient's PET scan, 
I think she can be helped by a procedure we have begun to use in Europe. Here is an article on the treatment protocols we have devised. Though this is a new therapy, it has proved quite effective in several cases already. I went ahead and started Leclerc's treatment. I hope it works. There's no telling if we'll find a liver in time. Softer, cleaner hand. He sat up and began to groom his whiskers. Always a good performance. How's the little girl in 137? Emily, her family's had a hard day. But it looks like she's responding now. The well, support system is working well. Labs mm -hmm. look good. What's next? A quiet night, I hope. Hi, Tom. We just did a new liver function test on Emily Nelson. And good news, I think we caught this thing in time. She's doing so well, I canceled her listing for a transplant. I'll fill you in tomorrow. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Mommy. Now, I want to say three things very quickly out of this one film. One, you're going to move into a world where you have worldwide, real-time distance medicine. And that means both job opportunities, it means dramatically different health care costs, it means dramatically different quality of care. Two, by using this kind of a model, you can literally be current in the smallest rural community in the world with the most advanced technology, wherever it is. So you're able to move into saying, this just happened, what do we need to do about your cancer, and know what the most current treatment is anywhere on the planet in real time. Three, there's no reason only doctors have access to it. I mean, what this is going to mean is, I have several friends now who ch whose children have problems, and the friends are on the internet accessing medical libraries because they have a higher passion for solving the problem. Not that they know as much, but they're willing to focus on getting their child's solution. So within a, within a decade, I think, you're going to start getting user-friendly medical systems that allow you to learn about your disease and your protocol and you to look at all the research being done everywhere on the planet and for you to access it from your home or from your hospital bed. And it's, a very, it's a totally different model than the model we've had for the last 70 years. And it both creates tremendous revolutions in healthcare and it creates an enormous opportunity for us if we lead that revolution to provide the highest value care on the planet and to create the most high value jobs uh, and in that kind of world, you have Americans who don't worry at all about China or Mexico or anywhere else. We offer health care. They offer other things. Next week, our topic is going to be replacing the culture of violence and poverty with the culture of productivity and safety. And we're going to look at next week's reading, which is Don Eberly's Building a Community of Citizens, Chapter 16. And I strongly recommend you look at Marvin Olasky's The Tragedy of American Compassion, which I have with me and which is a fabulous book.